This is Dr. Pepper Friday Night Rivals. 5A Region 1, nine teams in the region. You got two clear favorites at the top, Gulf Shores and Viger, both unbeaten on the year and unbeaten in the region. That means two teams are going to have to battle for that number three and number four spot. And one of the teams trying to keep their playoff hopes alive tonight, the Rams of Faith Academy. And that's where we're at. Jim Cox and Dan Brennan for our 5A Region 1 matchup here tonight. It's been a long time, Dan. It's just twenty something years since we've been on this on this campus here at the stadium. I don't know what we did wrong, but uh, <laughs> it's been a while. But we're excited to be here tonight. Yeah, boy, we got to see this Viger team a couple of weeks ago yeah. against UMS, and uh, as I would say, as impressive as a collective team effort as we've seen all year long, and it really started on the ground. Starts with speed. Carlos Benjamin, he got out of the gate real quick against mm -hmm. UMS, right? First Went all the, the way. Game, yeah. mm, so uh, he's got great speed, great vision, great toughness. He's a really wonderful back, and he's going to get the ball a lot tonight for the Viger Wolves. Uh, they'll do some play action as well and uh, play off of him, but uh, you can look for Benjamin to get the ball plenty. Yeah, and he's averaging over 10 yards a carry. That's why he gets the ball and plenty. Uh, part of the 5A state uh, championship team in the 4x100 meter relay yep. as well. Now, this Rams team, they know they're going to have to try to slow them down. Got to do it. Linebackers usually one of your leading tacklers. And, boy, they they, they got to try to bottom up. You don't want to have to be chasing them around out in space. No, and they play a lot, they play a lot both ways. So Carson mm -hmm. Ratliff is an excellent middle linebacker for this Faith Academy team, but he also does some – does some duty at running back, too. So Faith plays more guys two ways than Viger does. That could cost him tonight a little bit and maybe even by the end of the year. But Ratliff's a good player. Yeah, uh, I think Faith battling the injury bug a yep. little bit coming into this one as well. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for the home team for the Rams as they take on this Viger team. Unbeaten on the year, ranked number seven, one of the top teams in 5A. And we'll have a kickoff tonight here at Rams Stadium between the Wolves and Rams coming up right after this. Way out in Westmobile tonight here at Rams Stadium. About to get this one underway at Faith Academy. Our coin toss took place just a moment ago. And the coin toss brought to you by the Mobile County Sheriff's Office. Viger won the toss. And Viger said, we want the ball. We're going to put our powerful offense out there. And Sean Kelly, our referee tonight, gives the official sign. And Viger will get it to open things up here tonight. But not before we get a little... Coast Guard flyover. Yeah, really nice, huh? Coast Guard, of course, based right out here. Not very far from the school at all. Did a little, little we're getting, we got a little wave from inside as mm -hmm. they dip down here around mid midfield. And That's pretty cool. Flyover complete, absolutely. Those guys, like I've been offshore a bunch. I've had those guys on boats with us before and doing some training things. And they're just spectacular. We love them, love what they do, and really, uh, really proud of what they do on our waters here is our U.S. Army kickoff ready to get underway. Bryson Hearn for the Rams will send this one out. Benjamin Garrett Malone back deep. This one taken about a 15 by Holcomb and Garrett Holcomb still on his feet, changes direction of flag. You can guess that's probably going to be a block in the back there just as Garrett Holcomb, one of the members of that Four by one hundred. I, I was going to say he that the name sounded familiar, like he was one of those guys that had that uh, won the state, right? Yeah, boy, and the uh, rain really starting to come down here. Sean Kelly, our referee, so it's a hold there on the Wolves, and that'll back him up. Jack French, boy, he's been doing this a long time. Last year, they actually made it to the semis last year, and. So he's been here, he's been at Baker, he's been at Baldwin County. He's a legend over in Mississippi. Yeah, All time, is. look at his numbers here at Faith. All time, he's 309 and 139. He's 113 and 54 in Alabama. And he has turned some programs around. We saw him do it at Baldwin County, saw him do it at Baker. We did. And he's done a great job out here at Faith as well. As we look at Graham, we'll give it off to Benjamin. And Benjamin slung down in the backfield. Good penetration by the Wolves to start, or excuse me, by the Rams to start this one off here tonight as Trent Sellers, the big junior at 6'6", 215, broke in there to make the stop on Benjamin. Benjamin in the backfield, Jackson, his favorite receiver, one of them for Graham. Holcomb there as well. Look at number 65. They're going to run behind the Georgia commit, Micah DuBose, just a junior, and he is really the stalwart of that offensive line, and they'll rotate some others in there to get the ball. But we loss of five on 
First down for the Wolves and motion. Give it off in this Rams defense. Strung that one along. And the Rams defense who gave up 40 last week to St. Paul's with two big stops here early on. Caesar and Sellers on the edge. Sellers made that play on first down. Brown and Williams in the middle. The linebackers, McLean. Also, Ratliff that Dan talked about, their leading tackler. And Cooper Searcy had a big game last week in St. Paul's there as well. Andrus Stabler. Ty Goodwill, watch for number seven. He's got six interceptions this year. He had five last year. And Elijah Cox on the other side. And third and 14. Here for the Wolves. Brant. Tried to go quick there and stop immediately was Dylan Jackson, the sophomore, his fourth catch of the season and a uh, 14th catch of the season, excuse me, and a quick three and out. Yeah, that didn't for take the long. And they went backwards. They did. The first, very first play, Benjamin lost five. The exact opposite of what we saw last time when he went about 80. That's right. And uh, from there, they just could never get it together. Faith Academy got to get the ball in really good field position. So Todd Goodwill stands about midfield. Fremont with pressure coming. Got the punt off. End over end. Goodwill takes it at the 50, and he's dropped right there. Actually, that's Dotson now. They'll send Dotson out there. And but great field position. And what a what a stand for this Faith Ram team defensively to force the three and out. Yeah, and I was just checking on things right before kickoff. This place is, this is, this is, uh, people are still coming. And yep. it's, it's packed out here at Faith Academy. So the crowd is into it. Rams have got good field position. Daughtry's got the big arm. EJ King back out there for the Rams. Now he's missed the last two games. They're leading runner, but this time they'll give it off to Dotson. And Dotson turns the corner, gets inside the 45 of the Wolves and steps out of bounds in the near sideline here. Dotson, 221 care, uh, yards coming into tonight. There's Daughtry, who said King again. Missed the last two games. King with three touchdowns, almost 300 yards on the season, rushing. Stabler with five catches, but they want to get it to Goodwill. He's been banged up, but he's got 24 catches for 455 yards on the year. They, too, have a big left tackle. Mark Jackson, 6'5", 280. And... They like to run behind him as Dotson goes in motion up that way on second and three. Daughtry looking for maybe a double pass as this one gets knocked loose and ball still rolling to the far side, still loose. And the Rams able to get on that one as Goodwill is who they want to get to. It looked like they were setting up a double pass maybe there, Dan? Yeah, I, I'm just having trouble seeing it, Jim. It's a little bit – I, I, I want to make sure you can see it. I'm not in your way. We're kind of cramped in here. Boy, look at that ball just come flying loose. Knocked all around. Stabler had a chance at it, and the Wolves had a chance at it. And they go back a couple, so third and six. Daughtry, the senior, about 6'4". Has Dotson and King with him. Stabler to the bottom of the screen. They give it off to King. King makes a cut at the line of scrimmage, and now King's going to have a Roof Doctor's first down. Sure is. And King again, said, missed the past two games. He's been banged up, but they go right behind the big tackle on the left side. Yeah, they, they know where Jackson is for sure, and he does a good job. They clear it out. King makes a good cut. King gets the first down. Inside the 40, up to the 38. Here for the Rams. Daughtry again gives this one off. Dotson and Dotson up to about the 35 before he's wrapped up and brought down by the sophomore Devin Wits it for the Wolves. Jake Lang, he and his brother Jai, twins starting here. Yeah, I love those guys. Yep, Jackson and Coleman in the middle. Purifoy, the All-Stater, he's having another great year. Keep your eye on number three, Gales, Durgan, Coates, Pearson, and Malone. They will all go and take the ball away if it's in the air. And second and seven here. For the Rams, back to King, and King gets slowed down. And there's Purifoy, the All-Stater. Two-time All-State going to Mississippi Valley State. He's a four-year starter. He's their leading tackler now with 
62 on the year. Coming in tonight, 10 tackles for a loss, two sacks, three interceptions, two fumble recoveries, one forced fumble, and two defensive touchdowns. Does That's a great job of coming off the edge, Jim. He'll disrupt things. He'll make tackles in the uh, backfield. Like we said, if he was bigger, he'd be, he'd be going to play in the SEC. Yep. He's that kind of player. Four-year starter. And you just watch him. He loves it. I mean, he loves being out there. Third and seven. They empty the backfield. Daughtry and this one dropped. Oh, had it inside the 30. And Ja'Cory Stabler. Couldn't hold on that. It's almost looked like Stabler's a little surprised that that was coming to him, maybe. He's like, thought, uh, the Biker was a little surprised. They thought it was maybe coming to the. Yeah, I mean, Stabler wasn't wasn't covered at all. And so from the. It's two-town territory, right? Yep. From the 35, they'll go for it here on fourth and seven. Biker's defense only allowing 12 points a game, and they'll keep King in the backfield. Here on fourth down for the Rams. High snap. Doherty steps up, zings that one over the middle. It's broken up and incomplete. And the Viger Wolves come up with a stop on fourth down. Boy, there's a lot of guys in white and green when you throw it over the middle like that. Gets a little scary, a little dicey. Viger Tiger turns him over. Durgan now, was back they, there, yeah. They're going to get the ball in decent field position, see if this offense can't get revved up a little bit. But I, I, And how impressed were you with that? Rams defense had three and out to start Absolutely. the game here. Yeah, and then and their offense was able to move it on the ground. I didn't take a look there, and mm. that one broken up, and you see Jack French. He's seen it. He's seen it all over and over again. Yeah, I'm gonna, we will take a timeout here. Five minutes gone by in the first scoreless in a 5A Region 1 matchup between Faith and Viger on Friday Night Rivals. Packed house here on homecoming. Oh, yeah. I mean, packed and then some. Viger doing a good job across the way, bringing their fans as well. Both teams. So I think I say that. Hold on. So, yeah, both teams with a punt. Or I should say a, a turnover there on the first one. And now we have another turnover. That one is deflected. And coming up with the interception was Carson Ratliff that Dan talked about. The linebacker, the pass gets deflected on first down and it kind of hung in the air momentarily and then the diving interception by Carson Ratliff. Yep. You look at the stats, you say, I think this guy's got a nose for the football. Then you watch the game and you say, yeah, that would be true. Watch this, Ratliff's really nowhere near, but he he puts himself in a position yeah, to think, get to it. I think that might've been Andrews who was on the coverage, who got a hand in there to force it free. And so Viger goes three and out on their first possession to punt. And then they turn it over on the first play of their second possession. And it's like the drive just keep, kept, keeps going for the Rams here at the 37. And now EJ King, that ball came, came loose. And we say, is he down? Or are they going to say it's a takeaway? We have a really tough vantage point here. And it's a takeaway. Got stripped away. Pure for it. Around the football again, and this time he strips it away from EJ King. Let's watch the replay. So King gets in space. Does it ever come come on the ground? Purifoy on the right side just comes away with it in his third fumble recovery of the year. And now Viger's offense out there for the third time, and we get a flag. So we've had a turnover on downs, and then we've had an interception and a fumble. And now Sean King says Faith's defense jumps on that one here on first down. Well, don't tell us you're bored. <laughs> They go back, Benjamin trying to get around the right side, and he'll get knocked out of bounds there. A gain of only a, only a couple. The Wolves had Kelvin Brisker in there at wide receiver. Brisker, the backup quarterback, brought him in there with Jack French. We were talking about how many Friday nights that young man has spent on the sidelines uh, here on the Gulf Coast. What a great career, too. Like you said, over 300 wins, a bunch in Mississippi, a bunch in Alabama. 
A bunch here at Faith. All up to the 47. And now Graham wants to keep it, and Graham will get two, maybe mm. three, hard-earned. So he tried to get around the corner, and Ja'Cory Stapler came up to make the stop. See, a lot of these guys, these are very familiar names. They played both ways, a lot of the Rams on Faith Academy. And just came up and squared him up. He got two yards after the hit. Yeah. Graham, another one of those members of the 4x100 state relay championship team. Oh, then also he won the 5A 100 meter himself. Wow. But he didn't get a chance to get much space there to use the speed, and now they'll go power again to the near side, slips a tackle, and he's going to have the Viger first down into Rams territory up to the 47. The quick penetration by Cooper Searcy, outside linebacker. We're talking about guys going both ways. Watch, it's King, the starting running back, who comes in there to make the tackle. Yep, yep. a lot kind of guys are going both ways. Kind of get the feeling that maybe on defense, Jack French is saying, hey, it's got to be all hands on deck tonight, guys, to try to slow this slow this Viger team down. That's a fair point. At the 43 in the hard count, and King jumps offside in five more yards here. King had missed the past couple of games. He's played some throughout the year over, over on that side of the ball, but mostly on the offense. Yeah, a few of their better players have been dinged up here during this uh, mid-season stretch. Graham looking to throw again. Zings it out the far side, and that one incomplete goes over the head of Chris Perry, the senior. That's a long throw from it this, is. this hash to that far side. Yeah, line. it was, and it was uh, not all that accurate. He had, a, he had a clean pocket, but... Jerry and Graham, South Alabama, commit here at quarterback for the Viger Wolves. It's the backup quarterback last year. And now second... And five for the Wolfpack. Graham will roll out, and I think we had movement up front this time by the Wolves. So I'm impressed early on by this Rams team coming out here, and you would think maybe a bit overmatched, but they have come out, and they look like they're ready to play to start this yeah, one off tonight. Somebody forgot to tell them, for sure. Viger's got motion, so they're... That's it. That place ends before it starts. And even watching that pattern, uh, Jim, they, Faith was doing a good job of sticking right with the uh, Viger players in in the routes. Yeah, they They've should, got some athletes over here. Yep, they should just move it back to the 42, so it should be second and 10, and that's where we're at here. They had it misspotted, but they quickly got that corrected. Graham again. that one, airmailed that one yeah, over again, the far side. Really inaccurate with the last couple of throws. Going to bring up third and long, and there's Marcus Cook, second season here for Viger. Played at Viger, and then was an All-American center at Jackson State. It was just a, a young man we met last year, and we were super impressed with him last yeah. year. He was 27 as the head coach. He was the offensive coordinator on the team that won state in 2021 here for the Wolves and named head coach last year had the interim title for a while and now he's the head guy and looks like he's going to be there a long time now they get it out quickly on the near side wrestling ahead and he's going to be very close to the first time that was Brisker we talked about Brisker the backup quarterback mm -hmm. they're close enough to get it close enough to go for it here oh. under six minutes in the first period yeah going to mark him about two yards Short at the 34. Going to run some kind of power here, you would guess. He's got Washington in the backfield with him now. Oh, and look gosh. Like the, well, uh, now it's going to be fourth and fourth and seven. Yeah, they receivers took off, took off early. Here's precisely what we did not see from Biger in the game against UMS Wright, correct? No, did not. Did not see many penalties in that game. And 
They're making up for it tonight. But and, and, and they got the running game going right away in that yep. in that game here. And it's been yards have been tough to come by here in the first seven minutes of this one. Agree. So now fourth and seven back at the were, forty yard line. They were going to throw it on fourth and two. So I was a little surprised. Jackson in the slot. Brisker out wide to the near side. Graham rolling out. Just has to throw that one away with the pressure coming. And Viger looks discombobulated. Really early do. Out here. Yeah, it's like uh, the team we saw three weeks ago. The, 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 the players are here. But the, the effort or the execution, I should say, yeah. really is not to this point. This game's been played between the 35 so far. And Graham just... He had nowhere to nowhere to go on on that one. And we will take a timeout here scoreless. A little under five to go in the opening quarter on Friday Night Rivals. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, our Friday Night Rivals crew here at Rams Stadium on the campus of Faith Academy and Rams have held Viger scoreless here early on as they get it back after the defensive stop. And now Dotson going to be hit as he tried to pull through and really no nothing doing there as Michael Brown comes in to make the stop. Offensively, Vigers rushed it five times, Jim, for seven yards. Wow. No gain on first down for the Rams. Daughtry gives the handoff. King does some hurdling, and he piles across the 40 to about the 46. He'll bring up third and manageable here for the Rams. Yeah, not by a big margin, but they've been better on the ground than Viger to this point. Lines blocked pretty well, right over guard. This team fell behind 23-0 at the half last week to St. Paul's. So the Biger team we last saw hasn't shown up, and the Faith team that played last week no. isn't here either because this team looks pretty good. Third and four back to King. King hit and driven back at the line of scrimmage, and he won't be able to get past no. Jeremiah Coleman, the senior there, wrapped him up. And drove him back in fourth down. And I think Jack French will play the field position game here in fourth and four. And yeah. Punt this, this one away. He never, he'd never end up getting a sniff. It looked like he had a really good shot to get that first down. Coleman bottles him up. Uses a lot of strength to keep him from moving forward. Garrett Holcomb back deep to take the Bryson Hearn punt. A snap over the head of Hearn. He goes up, knocks it down, trying to grab it. He's going to be up and knocked loose, and the ball comes loose again. And it's still on the field and recovered by Faith. Now they're going to say, did Viger ever have possession of that? I don't think they had clear possession. And the officials are going to talk this one over a little bit. But it'll just be Viger ball. Right. They've never had it. Hearn did a good job just to get a hand on that one. Ball knocked loose. Viger. Nope. Never had it. Nope. So. Doesn't matter. Viger now will get great field position at the 34. Turnovers abound here in this opening Nine and a half minutes. Yeah, Faith having an alignment problem, trying to get somebody off the field. They'll now take, somebody's going to call a timeout. Yeah, they'll, Faith will take a timeout. Here, so we'll do the same. We've had a lot. Just hadn't had any scoring yet here no. in the first quarter. Scoreless. This matchup here tonight at Faith. Jack French and the Faith Academy Rams. Here after that turnover, we'll watch the Wolves take it over again. Benjamin slips a tackle and he'll get just inside the 
a 30. Got about four. Uh, had to work for it, too. Faith had a lot of guys right up there on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Searcy made the tackle. He had 11 stops last week against St. Paul's. He's their second leading tackler, the 200-pound junior. So pickup of three and second and seven. Graham fires and this one complete, able to get it to the near side, makes a move into the end zone. Touchdown Wolves, Garrett Holcomb, the sophomore, with his second touchdown reception of the night. And an AMS Calvert touchdown is Holcomb just made one move, had to go up and pull that one down. It's yeah. a bit of a high pass from Graham. Juke the safety and he was in. And they just kept prying that defensive backfield, Jim. Wonder if their scouting report just told them we've got better dudes than they do. Yeah. As he, far as in the passing game. He juke Goodwill who Good player. Jack French said, I'm not sure he might not be the best player I've ever coached. And yeah. he, that's a that, that's, that's saying something. It sure, certainly is. So Graham on to try the point after Amonis Calvert. Innovations in steel strengthened by people now hiring at amnscalvertjobs.com and had a whistle before that one, which actually may be helpful because it looked like no good. Graham had pushed that one towards Sims, maybe, right? Got to push that yeah, one to. Let's see where that's going. That's just going north. I think that was or is it going? No. I think he was going to the east when he kicked oh, that one. Yeah. Or he missed it that way. Maybe we'll we'll get into geography later on here tonight. So so it was against faith. And now Biger might go up, for go it. Go for two, yeah. Yeah. Want to keep an eye on that play clock. It's at fifteen. So they might have to burn a timeout here. Yeah. Just try to get the kicking tee off the yeah, they're down to five. They're gonna have to take a timeout. Yep. There's been no flow to this game so no, far early on. And all one. the turnovers. Yeah. So they, after the penalty, they take the take the timeout. So give us a chance to see what's going on here last night. You see McGill and Baldwin County. McGill with the win last night. Same with Murphy. And Foley <laughs> comes from behind to defeat Fairhope. Mary Jean Davidson tonight. Baker and Bryant, Blunt and Sarah Land. And a big one. 6A Region 1 up on the hill tonight. St. Paul's and Spanish Fort. Each team with just one loss in the region. Spanish Fort flying high after last week's uh, effort on TV. You may have seen it where yep. they came back from 20 down in the, at halftime. Beat their rival Daffy. Big game in this region tonight. Citronelle and BC Rain. Two teams playing really well. Alberta and UMS Wright tonight. Williamson and Gulf Shores. T.R. Miller and Bayside. That's a big matchup tonight in Baldwin County as well. Hillcrest Evergreen and Mobile Christian. And more games up to our north here as Viger says, yeah, we will go for two. After timeout, direct snap. Benjamin looking to turn the corner, and Benjamin does exactly that, and he's got the two-point conversion. When it's a race to the pylon. You like his chances. I don't know who's going who's gonna to get there, but yeah, they, oh, oh, we got a holding. Wow, holy smokes. Holding on Viger. You just, you're like, that play all happened so quickly. You wouldn't expect to hold on that play. Now, now what? So now you're going to Might bring, not be able to kick it that long. Yeah, how are you going to bring Graham back out to try the PAT? And this one will be from I will spot it at the about the 11. So it's going to be about a 20, 27 yard attempt. And also, too, it's to the near hash. So I don't think he tries many of these. Let's see. Kamari White will hold. And he got it. Graham. Nails it. <laughs> he nailed it. I mean, I had plenty of plenty of distance, too. Yeah, it was it was a very good kick. So Jerry and Graham, the South Alabama commit. Maybe he's going to be their kicker. Maybe. <laughs> in, in a pinch. So Viger on top 7-0 on the touchdown. Holcomb, the sophomore, 
his second of the year. Alabama State's already offered him and see the move he makes here in open field and just Goodwill. No chance against the speedster and Viger on the board by us on the board and with a lead by a score of 7 0. Ten minutes gone by here in the opening quarter. Viger averaging 25 points a game. So it's not like they've been putting up gaudy numbers yeah. on, on offense. We just happened to witness one of their better performances. Yep. yep. Defensively, they've been dominant, just giving up 12. 12 a game. And now Graham ready to kick here for the seventh-ranked Viger Wolves. The USA, U.S. Army kickoff, very high kickoff, taken to the near side and trying to break free is Dotson, and he'll do more than that as he's up almost near midfield. They'll mark him out about the 44. They see the speed of Dotson. I don't know if you could hear it in your living rooms, the crowd getting pretty worked up when Dotson, when Dotson got the corner. And Especially started, coming right yeah, to their, yeah. their sideline here. Mm -hmm. Flashing that speed. Cal and Faith Academy has got it in good shape at the 43. Goodwill up to the top of the screen. And King in the backfield with Daughtry. Little pump fake now over the middle, able to get that one off, and he got it to Goodwill, his 25th catch of the year, and we'll get about five on first down. I like Daughtry. Yep. Good looking gunslinger. Watch fake here. 13 touchdowns on the year. Eight yeah. Manipulates the defense, right? Yep. yep. Eight interceptions, but he'll, it's closing in on 1,000 yards already. And they'll give him four officially as Goodwill with the reception there, his 25th of the year. He's got a 90-yard touchdown already on the season. Daughtry looks in space and fired that one behind Elijah Cox, the senior. Cox had just kind of sat down there. Looked like he had a space, and Daughtry zipped that one past him. Third and six coming up here for the Rams. You throw it into that teeth of that defense, you are, you want to be pinpoint because Viger is yeah, now, talented and opportunistic. Yeah, now we got Slade Sullivan in here at quarterback for the Rams. He's just three of 10 on the season. Sullivan complete to the near side, maybe short. Has got it back off to Dotson, and Dotson got maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and the punt it, team coming up. It was more. It was more of a, a just a pattern rather than a screen. There were no blockers out in front. Viger closes quickly. That's what they do. Yeah, Greg Crosby there. Yep, to Crosby. Make the stop. And so after the good return, they only pick up a few, and Hearn tries to angle this one to the near side, and Holcomb. Takes it back around the 15, and Holcomb looking to get up the edge. You can see his speed there. He's across the 40, so that's not going to net the Rams much on that punt. And Viger's offense will come back out here. I didn't even see the other quarterback leave the field, did you? And the Wolves after that last touchdown after a couple of turnovers to start the first quarter. Back out here again, good field position up at their own 44. Graham again on the keeper looking for a block and gets wrestled down at the 49 as he came racing through there. But Trent Sellers, Sellers at 6'6", 215, those long strides able to close the gap. On Graham. Last play of the first quarter, Jim. And that will bring, as Dan Brennan said, the opening quarter to a close. Viger on top by a score of 7-0.
5A Region 1 matchup here tonight on Friday Night Rivals. Homecoming night. Big crowd at Faith and Wolves on top 7-0 through 1. We have teamed up with Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola Bottling Company United to bring you the ultimate high school football experience. Stay tuned for our Dr. Pepper one-of-a-kind player of the game and winner's belt. Present, that'll be a presentation at the very end of the game uh, down on the yeah. field. So I, I don't know what the budget was for the belt when they started the season, yeah. but like they went over. <laughs> they went over the budget buying the <laughs> belt. Daughtry back out there now on defense. So we saw him come out at quarterback, and now he's back out there at safety and now on the direct snap Benjamin Benjamin breaks free watch out the big speedster and he's in for the touchdown 51 yards no flags Amos Calvert touchdown for the Wolves this is what we saw a few weeks ago and this was the young man doing that yeah it was and he was that was a direct snap again is that what they did yep straight to him yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. The old wildcat is what they call it. He kind of probes around a little bit, then he makes the and then he's makes the decision, and then he's gone. Yep, no one gonna no one gonna catch him. That when you go 51, it doesn't hurt your 10 10 yard plus average uh, <laughs> that he has carrying the ball. Yeah, 10, 10 yards a carry coming into this game. Amonis and off he goes. Calvert Innovations and Steel strengthened by people now hiring at amoniscalvert.com and that dot com and that. PAT did not get over the heads of the linemen, so it'll stay 13-0. Benjamin with his 12th touchdown of the season. This one from 51, and the Wolves on top, 13-0. Uh, just one play into the second quarter, and Viger ripped off the big wrong run. 51 yards for Benjamin. And the kick down middle of the field taken by Jaden Simmons for the Rams. And Simmons out across the 25, not much more, maybe the 27. The claim of the ball's out again. Uh, they said okay. it was down. See the rain really starting to come down here tonight. Just watch here as that was Purifoy down there and couldn't really tell when it popped free. Kamari White, the Wolves trying to wrestle it loose. Okay, like you said during the break, suddenly, it was like all of a sudden, suddenly Viger's up 13-0. Now, if you're the Rams, you got to get a little something going here on going on offense. And suddenly we've got like a downpour here. And they stay with Sullivan and Sullivan pulls this one down and now he'll take off and dives up ahead to about the 30. So Sullivan didn't start at quarterback. He's a senior. He'd only thrown it 10 times coming in tonight. was three of 10 and completed his one pass earlier. But Daughtry's out there, but he was playing defense. So maybe the choosing him, choosing defense over offense. Yep. Sullivan has got a really good arm, and he is a uh, he's an excellent baseball player. So I do believe this is the first year he's come out just to help the team out. Gotcha. But he's primarily looking to advance himself in baseball. Second and eight. Nice kid. And Faith takes a timeout here prior to. That snap, Jack French didn't like something that he saw coming up there. So we'll take the break because the rain comes down here. Viger on top by two scores early in the second. Early on here in the second, Jim Cox stand. Brennan, Friday Night Rivals. Faith Academy down by two scores. Taking on the Viger Wolves. Dotson gets some speed of his own on the right side. And he's going to have a first down for the Rams as he's bumped out of bounds on the Viger sideline into Viger territory up to the 49. Picks up 23 on the play. 
Dotson, good speed here to get to the edge. Good vision, too, by Dotson. Well, he was wanting a little bump, wanting a little late call there from Pearson, but doesn't get it and into Viger territory. Back give again. This time it's King, and he'll fall forward to about the 46. Purifoy in there. I could... I could probably say that on most every play that's bottled up and wouldn't <laughs> yeah, be wrong very often. Just go ahead and call out that mm -hmm. name. You'll probably be right 80% of the time. You get about four on first down. Has it been King that's been out for the last yeah, several weeks? A couple, couple games. Yeah. Hadn't been in there. And you got Simmons in there now with Dotson. Now give it back to Dotson again on the right side, and Dotson with some speed up to the line of scrimmage, and going to be a couple short with third down coming up here. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're doing a pretty good job blocking, and that's it's, they've got some size on an offensive line, and it kind of drops off where they've got not much size, but a little bit of both. Doing a good job. Yeah. Third and a long one here. Right back to Dotson. Dotson puts the head down and lunges forward. And he's going to have the Rams first down. Good second effort. There going up on the right side. Uh, Roof Doctor's first down. and Moves the chains again for the Rams. They needed a little something like this on this, on this possession. And now they're inside the 40. This Bigers had some big plays on the ground, but based on a better job and kind of sustaining drives with uh, with this sort of offense. Bigers only given up three rushing touchdowns all season. Go back to Simmons and Jake Lang, the senior. Jake and Jai, the, the twin starters, and then their brother Montrez is the defensive coordinator for this Bigers staff. One of them was our student athlete, I believe. Yep. I agree. Mentioned Montrez on the staff here. One of 11 assistant coaches at Viger that graduated from Viger High School. Wow. That says something. I think we saw what Viger meant to Viger a couple of weeks ago when we were there and they brought back uh, all those members of those great teams. No question. Simmons slips through and then puts a big bump on his own guy and then gets thrown forward with a little help from big Mark Jackson for another Root Doctors first down. This looks like a Fran uh, Jack French team right here, right? Yeah, no doubt. Line up, run the ball right at you. Watch at the end here. As Simmons bangs into his own, own guy. Now Jackson, the big left tackle, just not really supposed to be able to can't pull him forward, so didn't get a flag on that one. But and inside the 30 is George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers try to fire up the crowd here at Rams Stadium. Simmons spins and he'll fall inside the 25, about the 24 before Purifoy stops him there and get maybe three. They'll give him two officially. Very methodical drive, some really good runs, some good action by the offensive line up front. Just moving some people. And they got King. King's a big back at 5'11", 205 pounds. Again, he was their leading rusher with almost 300 yards. And as Dan said, he's been out the past couple of weeks. They'll give it to him and lumbers forward and he's going to be just short but bring up third and just third a couple about, here yeah third about three but he's king is down and slow to get up mm. Mm, so i don't know if that's a the injury that he's been battling for the past few weeks but he has not really tried to get up and. No, he looks uncomfortable. If he was suffering from something, it would not surprise me that it's that re injury. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, wow. They tend to EJ King pass along a couple of scores that big matchup in Spanish Fort. Spanish Fort 21 0 on top St. Paul's in the second quarter as King gets up. Spanish Fort, that big 35 27 win last week. So they're up 21? Yep, 21 0. They, over they, St. Just, Paul's. they just kept on the, they kept the scoring streak going. And their defense kept playing lights out, it appears. Uh, Saraland. 21-12 in the second quarter against Blunt. Interesting. Gulf Shores leads Williamson 21-0. No score to report yet. UMS and Alberta. This one, big one in this region. 7-7 BC Rain and Citronelle. Both those teams on the uptick here on third and a long three. Now they bring Daughtry back in, so thinking maybe more of a pass and Coming with a big charge. I think that was Micah DuBose, the yeah. Georgia commit. <laughs> Micah gets going, Ian. That's inertia. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying his breaks didn't work, but they didn't work soon enough. And that's the first down Faith Academy. So they move, they'll bring him over and there's a bit of a run stopper there yep. on defense, but we've seen him do it too. Yep. So as we said, they so now they swap Daughtry back out for Sullivan. And Dotson. Kind of tries to scoot around there, but gets brought down by Jai Lang. Lost his bucket. So he'll go out for a play. They're doing a good enough job up front, Jim, to give the backs an option, try to figure out exactly what they want to do, and they're able to juke around a little bit for some positive yards. Done that a lot tonight. They pick up three there on first down as we're inside six minutes here in the Second quarter, Heiger led 7-0 at the end of one and scored on their first play here in a 51-yard run by Benjamin. Back off to Simmons. Simmons tries to dance and move forward, stays on his feet and lumbers ahead. And good job there before he's finally brought down by Witsit. Boy, turned something into what looked like was going to be nothing there. And he's yeah. in the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. Looked like it could have been a loss, actually. Watch all the moves here. That's looks two like, bows. Yeah, it looks like biker has got him, but it's no quitting Simmons. Look at that. Yep. Got Very a, end of the run. Got around a tackle from Lang and brings up third and three again. And now they'll bring Carson Ratliff in from linebacker. You would guess it's going to be in as like a blocking back here, Dan Brennan. Now some miscommunication, and they give it off to Simmons and he's going to be about a yard short. Yeah, Rattler was there to provide the block. Middle linebacker and Lang made the stop in fourth. I'm going to say no gain, so fourth and three. And they keep Radcliffe in. Trying to draw Viger offside again. Now play clock inside. Ten and approaching to five, and they think they're gonna have to take a timeout. Yep, Jack French lets it run all the way down to one and takes the timeout here on fourth down. And we'll see if they fourth and three. See, see if they'll keep Sullivan in or bring Dontre back in. Timeout call here. Fourth and three coming up. Approaching four minutes to go in the second. Slade Sullivan and the offense for the Rams back out here on fourth and three from the 13. And King, who was banged up, comes back out here for the Rams, and he's the lone setback. Got Dotson and number seven, Ty Goodwill. You would think they'd want to get it in Goodwill's hands if at all possible. Dotson in motion. Sullivan looking to throw. Fires and he's got it complete. He's going to have the first down, able to get it off to Simmons. You would have thought maybe they were going to be going more to the end zone, but they only needed three and they get enough for the Roof Doctors' first down. I'll tell you what, great play by Sullivan here because he, he's feeling the pressure trying to get the play in right now. Dubose was coming and when Dubose just, you know, just got to put his arms up in the air and it's yeah. like trying to throw around a radio tower. <laughs> <laughs> Big son of a gun, isn't he? Going to Georgia, right, Danny Boy? That's that's what I hear. 
at the five. Dotson trying to get around the right edge. Dotson lunges, and he's in for the Ram touchdown. Pleasing the big crowd here on the home side. Dotson's been good tonight. Good drive for the Rams. There, Amos Calvert touchdown. Amos Calvert innovations in steel, strengthened by people. Jobs at AmosCalvertJobs.com. Let's watch again. Dotson bots it to the outside, Dan. Yep. Uh, Lang fell down and <laughs> he just sneaks it in right there. Yeah. Once once Lang went down, Dotson was high in the end zone. He's yeah. got his second of the season. Good players had a good half. And Hearn on. for the PAT, and he's got it. That could be a big point. I was just going to say, suddenly a six-point game, and the Rams with the impressive touchdown. What was that, Vince? Sarah Skates Coast Guard had the cool flyover, if you weren't with us right at the top of the broadcast. That's kind of a double flyover. Yeah. It's really cool. And if you didn't see it, we asked, like, where, where have you been? Why weren't you with us to start? That's the Rams student body section just below or just above Jack French here, just below him. And Jack French, yeah, here's what we here's what we had on our flyover. Went first time a little high, and then the second time got it down a little low. My dad had a friend who was a helicopter pilot when he was in the service and he used to fly over our house and he would always say he was going to drop Kool-Aid bombs on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the flyover from the Coast Guard and of course stationed out here in Westmobile and well, that was a drive that the Rams needed. Well, really. so far tonight, Jim, Vigers made the big plays. Yep. Faith Academy's made more plays. I would agree. And, and we were also saying this is kind of the game Faith Academy wants. They, 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 you're not going to get in a shootout and win probably against this Viger team, but Kind of slow it down, yeah. more methodical. And it was interesting on that drive. It was so much of it was run, run, run. Yep. Then it was Sullivan's pass. Down the fourth and three. Yeah. Now the squib kick to the near side taken at the 18. And Benjamin with speed, and he's up to the 40. And Viger again will have good starting field position. But Viger has not been in a rhythm offensively. They nope. scored on the short short drive after the turnover and then the big run by Benjamin for 51 yards, but yeah. they haven't found their rhythm on offense no. at all tonight. Agree. And that's exactly what we did. So we saw both yep. against UMS, right? They had rhythm on offense and they also uh, were able to strike with the big play. So heading into the half, let's see what we get here from the Wolves. Yeah. Graham is not a guy who threw, they don't push the ball down the field a lot. They're, no. Most of the yards are run after the catch yep. type, type things. He's, Completed 30 passes coming in tonight, but only for 275 yards. So he's not a. They don't. They don't really take a lot of shots downfield. Benjamin goes down low and then gets to the outside. He'll pick up five. You really saw him squat down behind yeah. his line. Yeah, he's such, such an impressive runner. Yeah, just five nine. You kind of get lost. He squats behind Dubos at six five. You know, it's he's hard, lost. Hard to see back there. Yeah, yeah Dubos just a junior. He started. We talked about this. This team that won state in 2021. He started as a 14-year-old at left tackle on a state championship team. Pretty impressive. Everybody in the country has virtually offered him, but going to Georgia as of now. Benjamin, this time pressure. And Russell Howell is the first one there for the Rams. All the penetration just blew it up. Benjamin never really had a chance. Boy, right yeah. there off the edge immediately. That was uh, McLean. Yep. That's, uh, you could credit him with blowing that play up. He came off the edge. There was nowhere for Benjamin to run or hide. Look at that scoring drive. 14 plays, 74 yards, eight minutes off the clock. Should have a Jack French signature there <laughs> exactly. below it. So third and seven at the 43 is McLean. Made the stop there, and is it a flag or a timeout, I think. Viger's going to call a time. Yep, Viger. It's a big third down here with oh, two yeah. minutes to go, especially since Faith will get the ball to start the third. And, you know, Faith tightened the game a little bit with that last touchdown, and now Viger's looking at it like this is a big opportunity. You're right, because of the fact that Faith gets it first in the second half. Well, we have a 
timeout, give us a chance for Dan to tell us about some of our friends, including Andy Citrin, who, of course, given away $5,000 in a scholarship again this year. Yeah, since 2016, he's been doing it. Andy Citrin, injury attorneys, has partnered with Friday Night Rivals, supporting student athletes and furthering education. And once again, Andy will award a $5,000 scholarship to one of our scholastic athletes. Thank you very much, Andy Citrin. And, of course, Amos Calvert. Without them, we would have no touchdowns this year. They've been a great sponsor for yep. years, by the way, haven't they? Yep. Amos, Amos Calvert has stepped up uh, and has been a part of all this for a long time. Innovations in steel are strengthened by other people. Yep. AmosCalvertJobs.com. I know that because I have to I say it after every touchdown, right? And they, and they are hiring, by the way. Third and seven. Rams crowd trying to cheer on the stop, throwing out to the far side, and it's going to be incomplete. Hasn't looked comfortable throwing it tonight. That one was low, and really Holcomb didn't have a chance. And no. not seeing the, the, the punt team quickly come out here. Watch Graham just, you know, didn't have his feet set, didn't step into that one, and now yeah. they'll swap it out and they'll bring the punt team out. And He's got the big 41-yard touchdown pass, but he just hasn't looked comfortable with his feet. So Dotson will stand back. Graham is the punter as well. And Faith brought some pressure on the first punt. Low snap. And they got it again and they block it. This one is blocked and picked up at the 30. Caesar. Torres Caesar in for the Ram touchdown. A block and scoop and score. Torres Caesar. Comes in, gets the block, picks it up, and rambles down the near side. Caesar just, he did it all by himself. So there's a flag on the near side. He's watch, picks it up at the 31. I think the flag, I saw the flag come up, but I think it's just going to be a sideline warning. I mean, he just, yeah. and, and you know, Graham didn't look very deep either on the punt formation. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, I think the, the flag was tossed back there. Just going to be a sideline warning. And now a PAT is all that separates Faith Academy from taking the lead here. Looking at 14 unanswered. So they go over eight minutes on a drive, and then they get a one-play special teams touchdown. And the kick is good. Places alive, Jim. And the Rams with 14 unanswered. Taurus Caesar has given the Rams the 14-13 lead. Coming up at halftime, Dan will interview some educators. Also talk to possibly now Jack French, the yep. leading coach with a lead heading into the halftime break. And yeah. That... that switched quickly with uh, 13 points by 14 I should say by Faith Academy here in the last few moments a, a, a quick it's just going to be another quick three and out for Viger and I think we were we were saying in the in the in one of the commercial breaks that if, if you're if you're by it's just a team you don't want to let hang around hang mm -hmm. around they're they're too good too well coached but you just see it so many times with teams you all of a sudden you got one team who's a favorite and the other someone hangs around and then whoo, all of a sudden you find yourself in a football game yeah, on a Friday night. And, and when you're not at your best at special teams and that's one third of the game that's yep. a problem so they've missed a pat and now a block punt for the score and bryson hearn Rams are feeling it here on homecoming night. Getting a little squib kick, and this one, Witsit will just take it to 35 as smartly just falls on that one. Let's take a look here as Taurus Caesar comes in from the top of your screen and just, you, you, can't, fault, you can't fault Graham on that one. He had no, no. no chance and then gets the fortuitous bounce. And Taurus Caesar 
What a wonderful name as well. <laughs> it is a great name. Happy kid right there. And we we talked about, I mean, it's, that is something, that play, he will remember his entire life. Yep. That's what's great about high school football. Yeah, and, and, and even it'll be preserved by our broadcast tonight yep. as well. Graham again throws that one. It's going to be low and incomplete as he again tries to go to Graham's footwork just looks not, he just doesn't look comfortable. No, he does not. And, and you would want that one to be incomplete because that's a loss otherwise. Yeah, Goodwill was out there, but stops the clock again. And, and Faith Academy will get it to start the third. Viger won the toss and wanted the ball. They could get it again this half. Yeah. Those at touchdowns. We have an all out festival that's broken out here now. <laughs> yep, at the 36. Fake to Benjamin. Graham over the middle, incomplete. And now a flag gets dropped at the 41 as they tried to go to Perry. So quick, I don't think a, a lot. Well, lineman got downfield quickly. That was a quick development play. Now, do you, do you take the penalty or do you, do you, would you rather have the down here? I think, you, I think, I think you have the down. You want to get the ball back quicker, right? Yeah, and the clock has already stopped. That was a quick and eligible man downfield. And they declined, they declined it. Yep. Yeah. So the state. Aside from one pass, Viger has not thrown it very well tonight. So you force him to try and do it in the air and try to get the ball back. Well, third and 15. Motion from Jackson. Graham pressure rolls out. Fires it to the far side, and it's nearly intercepted. Is over there as Ty Goodwill. Again, he had five picks last year. He's got six already this year. And another quick three and out. Yep. Faith's going to have to have a plan offensively here, Jim. Yeah, they're going to. And Vigers have to punt as, again, just Goodwill made a little break on that one. So trying to find. Cade has only got two catches on the year. And the 26. Graham pressure. And he got a short kickoff. He quickly just did a good job. He wanted to make sure he got that off first and foremost. And watch the official walk up to the, about the 36. And this will be interesting to see what Faith does here because it was – Almost exclusively on the ground, that eight-minute eight. play, yep. minute to drive. Yep. And they'll bring Daughtry back in. Faith has one timeout left. I mean, that's like that some classic rock out here. We got Rush flaring out here. <laughs> and now, no, they'll come back with Sullivan. I thought Daughtry was coming out there, empty backfield. Sullivan flings to the near side and Cox can't hold on to it. It's incomplete. So they All by himself over there on the sidelines, Jim. Daughtry out at the receiver position. Split him out to the edge. Jack French got some tricks up his sleeve. Not the, the first time he's had to do some things like this, right? No, not his first rodeo for sure. <laughs> Again, just legendary. I think he's in the Mississippi Coaching Hall of Fame yeah. in Mississippi. Coached over there for 25 years. He's punching his ticket for Bama, too, yeah. isn't he? He's been at Baldwin County, did a year up at Clark County, then really turned that Baker program around. Second and 10, they'll give it back off to Simmons, and Simmons with a big hit, Purifoy in the hole. And at, the, at that point, when he got done at Baker, we thought that was it. Yeah. And then he, I think he went back to Mississippi, for a year or two before coming out here. Hmm. Yeah, was it Baker for a handful of years as well? And now third and eight. And Jai Lang has to run off for Viger. Not sure if that was an equipment uh, problem. So Gregory Crosby will come and replace him and they'll get the clock started 
on Sean Kelly's command, and that's where we're at. I wonder if they just maybe keep it on the ground here, see if you can get the first down, but not get too... Yeah, you're not too worried about the clock here. I think you're, you're, you're happy just to go in with the, the lead if you... If you can, not looking to set up a screen. Sullivan able to get that one complete. Gets it off to Simmons, but he's going to be short of the first down. And it'll bring up fourth down, and Viger going to take their final timeout here with 30 seconds remaining. Here in the second quarter, it was 13-0 Viger, but Faith Academy has rallied back here to score 14 unanswered, and they have the lead by one. The final 30 seconds here of the first half. IBW Local 505 Halftime Show coming up next, and Brennan will talk with some educators down on the field. We'll also catch up with a coach that has the lead at the half right now. It could be a chat with Jack French. Coach French there. It's always a man of few words. Be interesting to hear what he has to say to Dan Brennan if they hold this lead here with a punt coming up. Hearn stands back at about his own 27. Gets off a good kick and there's contact as now Holcomb was run into as he went to make the catch at the 30. So that'll move Viger up here with just 21 seconds to go in the first half. Jerry and Graham comes out here as watches Holcomb hit immediately. In. I think River Johns was a little surprised. He was actually making that catch there. Penalty will bring it all the way up to the 40. So we've already seen Carlos Benjamin with the 51-yard touchdown. And now they'll split Graham all the way out wide. And they'll put Brisker at quarterback. Brisker wants to air it out. Looking far side, hangs that one up there, and it's broken up in triple coverage. Good job by Goodwill to break it up. Brisker floated the ball nice and high to give his receivers a chance there, but you see the three Rams all around. Holcomb there with 13.4 seconds left I like that take that shot if he gets hung up he's intercepted back there it's not not really going to turn into much as faith would probably just be happy to run the clock out there at that point but they'll keep the five receivers in three on top two to the near side brisker gets it off and benjamin slips down before he can get out of bounds as he was trying to turn it back up field but that will bring the first half to a close and the Faith Rams with 14 unanswered have the lead over the Viger Wolves by a score of 14 13 is trying to catch up with Coach French on the sideline here, and Dan, Dan Brennan's got him down on the sideline. Dan. You've won a lot of games. You've been in a lot of games. There was a lot of game in this game. Ball going back and forth, a lot of things to correct, but you got the lead. Well, two good teams. You know, when they had their time and we had our time and, and uh, you know, second half play. I know you want to get with your team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Said Coach. French, always a man of few words. Homecoming night here tonight. They were down 13-0, but then the Rams started to battle back. Dotson with the first one, and then the block punt by Torres Caesar. 
And the Rams surprising Niger here at the half, 14-13. What a game. Halftime, what an environment, too. Uh, Faith Academy is leading Viger by the score of 14 to 13. It's nice to have old friends. It's nice to have new friends, too. Tamisa Jackson is the uh, current principal at Viger. Let's talk about some of the good things happening at your school. Um, right now, we're really um, excited about our athletics and our academics and our CTE programs. They're doing exceptionally well. Also, there's a lot of, uh, when we last saw you, it was it wasn't the dedication of the stadium, but it might as well have been. It was a really special night at uh, in Pritchard and at Viger that night a couple of weeks back. Talk about that environment. Um, it was wonderful. We were able to um, honor all of our championship teams from the 87, 88, and it was just so great to have all of our uh, championship teams to come back in the new stadium. So we were super excited about that. Great to see you again. Nice Can you step you. this way? Thank you. Mr. Pickering, how have you been? Been doing good. How are you, Dan? It's been a while since we've been on a a bus going to a, a, a Zach Brown show in right. Biloxi or something that's like that. Right. Right. Tell us about it. I know you principal here. Oh, yeah. talk, talk about all the good things happening at Faith Academy. By the way, what a turnout tonight. This atmosphere is outstanding. Man, I tell you, tonight we've got more alumni at a football game than I've ever remember having. And so we are excited to have our alumni. We have the very first homecoming queen of 1973. She is here tonight. Uh, we've got the class of 1973 we've the 20-year reunion for 2003 is tomorrow night and uh, they turned out I tell yeah. you and we've just got a ton of alumni here we're excited to have them here we're excited to have Miss Jackson and the Viger Wolves here tonight uh, it's just been a great and we've got some good football going on here Dan. Yeah, I saw the uh, crowd still coming in from the rear of the press box I could see the the traffic streaming in and when I got a look at this, it's like, yeah, we are beyond packed. Yeah, absolutely. We're at capacity. So, uh, and we're growing. We're going to have to continue growing. we got to grow with our facilities and all that kind of thing. One thing we've got going on now at Faith is a CTE program. Uh, this is our second year, and it is exploding. And we're really excited to see kids getting skills and certifications that they can go right into the workforce. Congratulations on your good work here at Faith, and uh, we'll see what happens in the second half. Good to see you. Yeah. Go Rams. You got it. The Back best. to you guys. Thursday night lights and Friday night rivals highlights from across the country. Third and ten. Terry to throw. Scans right. Directs traffic. Spins back. Middle of the field. Terry's still on his feet. He's wrapped up. Throws it. It's caught at the 15-yard line. Inside the 10. On the boundary side. Dragging across the middle, the reception to McCoy. He turns the corner. McCoy lowers the shoulder, breaks a tackle. In! Touchdown! Ten hour double pumps on third 11. Got a man. Howard! How did he catch that? How did it? It wasn't. Oh my gosh. Gonna use his legs, throw it to the end zone. That one is caught. Oh my goodness, Stephen Pavoyan. Put that one on the highlight reel for sure. On first down, has some time. No one to put it up deep. He's got it. Oh, oh, McClair. Wow. McClair. Baker. Clock moving. Rolls right. Baker. Throws it deep. Touchdown. And he's going to roll out. Throw into the. Oh, he's still oh, He caught the ball. Dan was just on the field talking about the big crowd here at halftime. And it said, we're at capacity here at Faith Academy. And their Rams have rallied from a 13-0 deficit. One play into the second quarter to put 14 unanswered on the board there in the second frame. And now they lead it by a score of 14-13. And kind of look around and tell you why we're out here at this matchup. You see the Viger Wolves coming in tonight unbeaten. Had that big impressive win last week or two weeks ago their last game against UMS right that we did here on Friday Night Rivals and they were off last week we got faith tonight this is their, just their second road game of the season and so they'll close things out with three of their last five on the road but everybody's kind of looking you know in a couple of weeks when you got that game at Gulf Shores it could be a couple of unbeaten teams if Viger gets the win here tonight but they are in a uh, 
Uh, I don't know when when dogs and rams, wolves and rams get together. I don't know what kind of fight it is, but it's a battle tonight for sure. Faith Academy, see their season got the win there against Johnson. That, Alberta, then they lost to Gulf Shores 31 16. Gulf Shores ranked number one in 5A, unbeaten on the year. And they scrapped out the win against that scrappy BC Rain team 29 21. Lost to Citronelle, who is really on the uprise and surprised a lot of people this year. 27 10 win. And then they struggled in St. Paul's last week 40 7. And then they're off next week. Then they got Williamson and UMS Wright. And that UMS Wright battle against Faith could end up being a battle for maybe that number four spot in the region depending on how things play out here and then they will close things out with their final game of the season at LaFleur but again nine teams in this region so no matter how you slice it five are getting left out and of those five some of those are going to be good good football teams right here's where we see things right now Gulf Shores unbeaten overall and in the region Biger unbeaten in the region then you got Faith Academy and Williamson at two and two. BC Rain taking on Citronelle tonight. Both those teams playing well. So one of those teams gonna get their second win here tonight. And then you've got Alberta, UMS Wright, and LaFleur all uh, there toward the bottom. But you see everybody's gonna be bunched up there trying to get that number three and number four spot. Yeah, somebody's in, getting left out, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, a couple of teams gonna get left out that'll have winning records and not make the playoffs in 5A. You see the top team, Gulf Shores, are so impressive. 6-0 and on the year, and they play Viger in a couple of weeks. Uh, they've already beaten this Faith Academy team in a scrappy game there. Ramsey, Clay Central County, Pleasant Grove. Moody leads Viger, ranked number seven. Gunnersville, Charles Henderson, and Scottsboro rounding out the top ten in 5A here in the state of Alabama. Here at homecoming for the Faith Academy Rams and they're on top by a score of 14 to 13 and they will also get the ball back to start quarter number three. It's Friday Night Rivals brought to you by Dr. Pepper here tonight out in Way West Mobile on UTV 44. The following segment is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Well, at Coca-Cola United, I think there's a lot of life lessons that can be learned that translates from school into our industry. One of them being task-oriented. If you're given a task at school, your homework, that project, being able to receive a task, being able to complete the task, and turn it in on time. Listen, you don't, everybody don't have to be a straight-A student. Um, if I was put my mom in the seat right here today, she would blush if she told you what my grades were. And I was able to be successful at Coca-Cola. So. And obviously, from the team sports perspective of it, is the teamwork that you learn the lessons to be able to work together as a team. And bringing all that together as far as being task-oriented, being able to work it as a team, um, I think will make you very successful. I mean, great crowd, great bands, great choir. We've, we've got you know, fumbles, uh, turnovers, big. We've, we've got a lot punts. here. Yeah, we've had a lot here in the yeah. uh, in the first half. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan at Faith Academy. Here's our highlights in the first half. Viger, after some choppiness on offense, Graham able to hit Garrett Holcomb, the sophomore, for his second touchdown of the season. Made it a 7-0 lead. And then on the very first play of the second quarter, Carlos yep. Benjamin, 51 yards to the house. You kind of felt, all right, maybe Viger's going to start to really pull away. Uh, yeah, that direct snap to Benjamin. He went all the way 51 yards. And then you've got to this. Yeah, here come the Rams. Sullivan converted on fourth and three, then gives it off to Dotson, who takes it in. And then Torres Caesar with the block punt. It bounces right up into his arms. He takes it 31 yards. PAT by Bryson Kern, uh, Hearn is good, and that missed PAT for Viger is the difference in this game right now. But look at the, to the bottom of the screen. 17 minutes to just under seven. I mean, that, and I, I, exactly, I think Faith Academy, this, this is exactly the game they hoped they would be in. Yeah, and viger has got to get the run game going. Yep. Uh, aside from the 51-yard run by Benjamin, they've got 19, period. That's yep. it. So they, they've sustained no drives, and they've really not – you know, they're just not churning anything out. Now, Faith's not doing it a little bit better until we got to that eight-minute drive. Yep. Then they specialized in it, 
really good sustained drive almost everything on the ground until the fourth and three that Sullivan had to pick up with a pass. Yeah, just three first downs in the first half there for this Viger offense. And that's why you're in the battle that you are right now. And time now for our Scholastic Athletes brought to you by Andy Citron Injury Attorneys. Jake Lang, Viger High School. He's a 12th grader, GPA 4.2. He's on the field tonight, right? He's one of the yep, line guys. Absolutely. Uh, sports, of course, he's a football player. He's also baseball, soccer, and track. Isn't that something? National Honor Society, City of Pritchard Ambassador, Viger High School Ambassador. Uh, he's got offers from Birmingham Southern and LaGrange College over in Georgia. He's got a really nice future ahead of him because he is uh, somebody that takes it all very seriously, scholastically, and obviously athletically, not just in football, but baseball, soccer, and track, too. <laughs> His twin brother, Jai, starts on defense with him, and then his brother, Montrez, is the defensive coordinator. Yeah, great, great uh, family, uh, very talented family, and they're helping Viger to a, a really good season, though they're behind by one point at halftime tonight. Now, also presented by Andy Citrin, Farron Westry, Faith Academy, a GPA of 4.5, plays basketball and track, uh, honors including a medical career tech program, NHS, SGA, Mu Alpha Theta, special needs volunteer, two-year defensive MVP in basketball, attending college to become an occupational therapist. So best of luck to Baron Westry and... Thanks to Andy Citroen, injury attorneys. Yep. $5,000, one of our scholastic athletes. Halftime, we'll come back, kick things off in the third. Faith will get it. They lead by one here on Friday Night Rivals. Halftime, Faith Academy on top, 14-13. Viger won the toss, elected to take the football, went three and out, and then you see Marcus Cook there, head coach of the Viger Wolves. I wonder what his halftime is. Just, I, I think there might be some – someone might be surprised at the score here at the half with the Rams on top, 14-13. And I just wonder uh, – Kind of what Coach Cook's message was there, uh, other than that, hey guys, we got to get some first downs. We got to get some. We got to sustain some things on offense. And being the old offensive lineman, he's probably saying it starts with you guys right up front. You know, that's a good point. He was an all. He was a great offensive lineman yep. at Jackson State too. So you know, he takes pride in uh, executing on offense, starting with that line. You know, the Marcus Cook that we've met probably is not the guy that talked to him at halftime. Mm -hmm. I, I think that he's probably got a fiery side, and if he does. It more than likely, he showed it during those uh, 18 minutes behind closed doors. It'll be very interesting to see once they get the ball back if we see a change in personality of this Viger offense. Again, three first downs yeah. in the first half after what we saw against UMS Wright and Pritchard two weeks ago. This is not what we would have expected at all. Yeah, well, they controlled the, the time of the time of possession. They controlled the, the game on the ground. Yep. And uh, as you said, besides the 51-yard run they have just 19 yards on the ground and they're gonna have to fix punt team too and, and uh get that fixed quick where they don't have to they're not giving away any more uh scores or turnovers like we saw at the end of the first half clayton west ready to kick off here dotson back deep with simmons short kick to the near side and Dotson able to grab it and Dotson on his feet. Special teams continue to be a part of this game as he'll get it up to around the 35 yard line. And the Rams offense will come out here with some swapping out of, of quarterbacks. Started with Daughtry at quarterback and then went to Slade Sullivan and Sullivan played the majority of that Second half of quarterback, and he'll come back out here now. Converted that big fourth and three down deep in Biger territory. Yeah, they, they don't have that touchdown without that. That was, a, again, a run-dominated drive topped off by a quick short pass. Good work by Sullivan. Yep, they put Daughtry, the starting quarterback, in the slot, and they've got King in the backfield along with Dotson, and he'll give it to Dotson, and Dotson. Makes a move at the 40, and he's going to be out near the 45 and across it, and he's going to have a first down for the Rams. You know, Dotson's been amazing tonight because there's been a number of times when the Viger defense did its job. They just didn't get him to the ground, and he just has got no give up at all. That plays seems like it's over, yeah. right? Broke two tackles behind the line and, of scrimmage. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's over to number two. That's all that counts. And Jai Lang finally wrestles him down, but a first down. 
Just a good Viger defense, too. Out to the 47. But, you know, even even here, it looks like, well, that's not much. But, you know, he'll fall ahead and he'll get five yeah. here on first down. And yeah. He'll take that on first down every every play. And Simmons. All the backs have run well. Yep. King back in the lineup tonight. Then he got banged up and he came back out there. And he is out there now and until, until Viger stops the run. You know, Rams is going to continue to do. That by keeping it on the ground, and here's King with another first down inside the 40, down to the 38 as he picks up 12, might give him 10, and King with another first down. Well, good, good job on the ceiling of the block there yeah, great, by Simmons. Great blocking and kind of an inside reverse, and King knows what to do with it. All three do. Viger starting to put more men up. At the line of scrimmage is blowing to make blowing in to make the stop on that one for the Wolves is the freshman Emmanuel Gales. You just see that box starting to starting to close oh, up yeah. a little tighter here. Oh yeah, you got to wrap up, got to get him to the ground. Loss of one. But Gales, a freshman. Yeah. What's his future look like? <laughs> uh, every Friday night, uh, <laughs> standing out on the field, I think in the fall, right where he's at. Yes. For the next three years. Back to King this time, and King stood up at the line of scrimmage by Lang, and he'll get to one back to the original line of scrimmage and bring up a third and ten here for the Rams. Good job here by Viger. Play, play designed to go left. King bounces it back out, and then he runs into one of the Langs. Yep, that was Jake. That doesn't always end well for you. <laughs> Usually it does not. No. And I think you'll see a lot of this here in the second half. It stays close. Rams not in a huge hurry play clock now. Inside 10. They'll have to hurry on this one now, though, because it's now inside five. Yeah, that's inexperienced quarterback. They might have to call a timeout. Sullivan no, able to get it off with one to go. Pulls it down. Now Sullivan trying to get to the edge, looking to turn the corner. Great open field tackle by the All-Stater, Brandon Purifoy. Sullivan showed a little burst there. It sure did, but he looked like he was going to try to get around the edge, and then Purifoy just does what he's been doing for four years here at Viger. And if he doesn't make this open field tackle, yep. Sullivan's going to get the first down. And so I think some discussion on the sideline. Do you punt it here? You're almost in no man's land at the 34. They're going to try, they're going to try a 51-yard field goal. Bryson Hearn. Now, but you don't have to take a timeout. Yeah, they got to burn one now yep, if the, they, they're serious about the field goal. They tried it. They, well, they did get it off, and Hearn's going to come up well short on that one, but it didn't. Everything seemed rushed, and they yep. ended up to be rushed there, and so they tried the 51 yarder. And well, I'll tell you, it was down to the sideline. You never but, want to intrude on a team. Go ahead. Yeah, but you know, but with that, with the miss, it goes back to the twenty. So it's not a bad to, strategy. Yeah. Uh, so that's you it know, it'd be just like uh, punting it out of the in the yeah. end zone. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Yeah, just just being on the sideline, you don't want to intrude. But at the end of the first half, things were pretty tense down on the uh, Faith Academy side of things, and. Uh, you know, I, I, that's another reason for Jack not to be in a good mood right there. And nothing doing for Benjamin there as Carson Ratliff again with the tackle. As we said, leading tackler for the Rams. Dan talked about him in the pregame show, highlighted him and the senior there with the stop and gain of about three He's for good, Benjamin. Good football player, both sides of the ball, really on defense though. Yep, we see Brisker starts the second half at quarterback for the Wolves as they put Graham out wide to the bottom of your screen. Brisker, pressure coming, just has to fire this one up, and it's tipped. Yes, to Corey Stabler. He's looking at it, and Brisker looked like he took a big shot at the end of that one. One of the, one of the. Faith players was there kind of trying to see if he was okay, and I think it was Ratliff who got in there. 
But the pressure was definitely coming in. Let's watch here at the end of the, the play. Ooh, you know, yeah, kind of got him, kind of got him like below the waist. When Frisker went down. Rat Rattler was concerned right away. Yep. Uh, the, the, the tackler on that play, and we'll be back. All right, we'll take a timeout. Mm, so we look as Kelvin Brisker is still still down on the on the field as Marcus Cook is coaches out there with them and training staff. It was a it, it was two two things. It was a it was a kind of a weird it's kind of a, an odd place where where Ratcliffe hit him. It was kinda of like kind of mid thigh and it and he, his weight was coming in so he the way he fell and the way his leg bent underneath him is what didn't look great. No, it really really didn't and then also the fact that that Ratliff immediately showed concern yep. for the Viger quarterback after the hit, but uh, really good to see him getting up and walking. It's just a, it was just a, a not a great angle, and saw that knee kind of bend at a angle it usually doesn't there. So, but the fact he's up and walking off under his own power is great. Yeah, great news for Kelvin Brisker. Yeah, hundred percent. Don't know if he's going to come back in the game, but he was he was. On the field a long time there before yeah. he felt like it was a, he could even try to get off the field. A lot of collective breaths being held um, there. And so now third and seven. And so you put Graham back at quarterback who has kind of struggled putting the ball in the air tonight. But Jerry and Graham, the South Alabama commit, will move back at quarterback. And they got Benjamin split out. They empty the backfield here on third and seven. Holcomb comes in motion, drops it on the exchange. Call it a pass? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mo Holcomb with a speed was coming in, and it was just, I don't know if it was going to be more, it was definitely a, a, a toss. So that, yep, that's an incomplete pass. You know, you hear that all the time. You know, should they not complete that, it's not a fumble, it's a pass. But you rarely see what, where it doesn't happen. And, and it happens so, like that was such a short toss. It would have been easy for the officials to miss it and call yep, it a fumble. I agree. So now here comes the punt team out right. again and Graham who's gotta, had gotta, one blocked. Got to block it up here. Yep. Torres Caesar brought it in for the block and score. And Graham gets a good kick off that time and Dotson calls for a fair catch at the 42-yard line. So we approach five minutes going by here in the third. Each team with a possession. Stones, world's greatest rock and roll band here, firing up the crowd at Faith. Yeah. This crowd is, they've been started up. Yeah. They, it's like a classic rock station just breaking out here on <laughs> playing the hits of the 70s and 80s great uh, great soundtrack here tonight and Slade Sullivan big 38 special fan about to take the snap I don't know I'm making that part up gives it to King and King bursts through King still on his feet up to the 49 and he'll pick up nine, nine on first down yeah. Well, if King was hurt, he's better. Yeah, was out the last two weeks, got banged up in the first half and came came back out before that half came to a close. And now second and short in clock. About to approach halfway through the third and Sullivan, now he wants to air it out. He's looking for the other quarterback. Daughtry hauls it in inside the 20. Daughtry went up over Kevin Malone. Hauls it down at the 16. But this one's coming back. This one's coming back. Is it really? What a wonderful catch by Daughtry. One on one. Great throw by Sullivan. Daughtry has the size at 6 3. Going against Malone, and I think 
Going to have an ineligible man down field here. Wow. Let's, let's see. That's it. Man, I'll tell you, they, they are. That is an unhappy sideline right now. I'll tell you what that does, though. It, it's suddenly now, if you're the Viger Wolves, you got to respect that Sullivan can throw the football yep. downfield because you saw early in this quarter, they were really almost da daring him to throw the ball when they were stacking the box. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And he can throw it. Second and seven. And now trying to reverse course is Dotson and nothing doing there is Purifoy. Already the double digits for tackles for losses on the year adds to that total. He's just a menace on defense, isn't yep. he? Look, comes in unblocked, but then able to get there. You know, with everybody going to the right, if, if Dotson could turn around and reverse course. Yeah, but he, he gathers himself and uh, makes the play. Loss of six. And it'll bring up third and 13. Uh, suddenly the Rams going backwards here. You know, part of being a good athlete, Jim, is knowing when to slow down. Yep. And he does that very well defensively. At one, Sullivan takes it. And now he's going to get pressured. and He's going to get dropped again by Purifoy. Came in there with Devin Witsit. And that drive that looked so promising to start. Gets shut down. Yep. Is Purifoy off the edge again. Third sack of the season. And it'll bring up fourth and forever, and Hearn will have to punt from inside his 15. Good high kick. Holcomb takes it at the 38. Holcomb with that speed trying to get free. Does a lot of east and west and ends up with about a five-yard return. And inside five to go in the third. Scoreless here in the second half. And the Rams still hold on to a one-point lead. And tonight's game brought to you in part by the Mo Mobile County Sheriff's Office, providing a challenging and interesting job. There's uh, opportunities right there. At, you can join Team, team Sheriff today at teamsheriff.org and inquire about a job for you and a future. Also by IBEW. It's the largest electrical union in the world, representing workers' rights in all areas of the electrical and telecommunications industries. Thank you to IBW, Local 505, for their sponsorship again tonight. Uh, Viger at the 43, direct snap to Benjamin. Benjamin floats to the outside, and he's going to get very close to the sticks, about maybe a yard short. He's hurt. Or is he? Oh, he's up. Okay. He's a little hobbling, though. Oh, yep. Shoulder. Yep. Uh, looks like he's going to go go off here. He's, he's, he's kind of favoring that right shoulder when he gets... Oh, he just... Yeah. He, you know, part of it, too, is he just... He, his feet went out from underneath him, and so he wasn't expecting to go down when you not yep. really expect, you know, to brace yourself. He stays in, but they put him out at... Receiver this time with Graham back at quarterback. And Graham, second and one. He'll keep it up the left side, and he's got the Wolves first down as he's now to about the 41 of the Rams. Jim, quick question. Yes, sir. Do the Wolves have one of the drives that Faith Academy pulled off in the first half? Do they have one of those in them? Ah, no, we haven't seen it. We've seen the big play. Like you said, that's what we've seen them with the big play, but not the Consistent play. Yeah, nothing methodical offensively. Right. He'll bring Demetrius Washington uh, Johnson back in in the backfield now. We'll also bring in Jake Lang as a blocking back. You would expect they'll just keep it on the ground with the power and the speedster. Graham lost the football at the end of that play. Still loose, picked back up and recovered by Viger. Wow. wow. Holcomb, man on the spot right there. So, you know, Graham, 6'2", 190, who can flat out fly. He's the 100 meters champion in the state of Alabama in 5A. They're just lining up some QB power here on the side, and this one get 
that's knocked off and Holcomb yep. able to fall on it for another first down. Direct snap to Benjamin. Direct snap, obviously, to Graham, the quarterback, but they're just running power right now. And they, they, remember I said, are we going to see a change in this offensive personality? Yep. So far, I think we have. Going behind the Georgia commit, Dubos. Yep. Yep, and his now to the near side, Holcomb splits a tackle, flag. That might be a hold on the edge. They have Lang out there, Johnson there as well. And where that was thrown, you would think it's coming back for a hold. Well, we had one big flag earlier with the ineligible hmm. lineman downfield that brought back a long, big play yep. for Faith Academy. Let's watch here on the right-hand side of the screen, see if we get the, the hold. Johnson is out there, number 26, see if it's him. Oh, yeah. That'll – you can, you can grab him in there. You just – you can't impede him from going to the outside. You no, can, and, and, and it's usually on the outside when they – when they see those yep. violations. The Rams – they only had 10 out there on the field. Well, Notre Dame defense. Uh, <laughs> Go Irish. <laughs> uh, first and 15. Graham again to the left. He's got Lang in front of him. Rams close it down. He gets... Got maybe six or seven. Yeah, gets past the original line of scrimmage as we're approaching two minutes to go here in the third. It was 13-0, Viger. 11 seconds into the second quarter since then 14 unanswered by the Rams. They're just running power on this on this uh, entire drive, Jim. Hayden McLean senior came in to make the tackle on that one and give him six as Dan alluded to now second and nine. Now Graham looking to do it to the near side. Graham looking for a block, and he's going to get wrestled down from behind as King. Good pursuit by E.J. King on that one. Another athlete playing both ways yep. for the Faith Rams. That one just took a little while to get to get going, but watch where watch where number one comes from here. Flees the block off there, and then just keeps hustling down the line. Good play. Good player. Michael Lawlin now out, split out to the bottom of the screen. You would think two down territory here for the Wolves. Graham just heaves this one up, looking for Holcomb, airs it a high in the air, knocked away by Goodwill. That one had so much air under it. And Goodwill with the pass break up, break up, as we said, he two way, two way player and. So a lot of colleges looking at him on the defensive side, committed to the raging Cajuns, and that one just hung, hung up there and allowed Goodwill to close it out. And now fourth and nine with a minute to go here in the third. This feels like a big play in this football game. Dan it is Brennan. a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they're going to run it there to give themselves an opportunity to, you know, run it twice. Yeah, or right. Got to give you a, a manageable fourth down. But they got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there, but Goodwill's a he's, a, he's a really good player. Yep, and play clock was winding down, and Marcus Cook takes a timeout, kind of agreeing with everyone here in the building. This feels like a big, big play here. He never looks like he's too wound up about anything, does he? No, he's uh, got that great, great demeanor, and Second year coach here at Biger High School and very confident in his team and in his kids. Yep. Very positive guy. You can tell he has a great connection with his kids too. Yeah, yeah I mean they, you know, he he's he's got a connection with them and also this as they that should be a ton of respect. Speaking of respect, how about Spanish Fort? After being on twenty seven seven Came back to beat Daphne last week, 
So they've now scored 70 and answered. They lead St. Paul's in that big 6A Region 1 matchup, 35 nothing. Wow. That probably you and I would have looked at that like a toss-up, right? Oh, for sure. Sarah Land on top, 56-12 over Blunt. But here we got fourth and nine. Graham, pressure coming, steps up, heaves it back over the middle of the field, and it's knocked down. Rams will take over after the fourth down stop. So back there, I think it was Daughtry. I think it was Daughtry. Started it. Quarterback playing in the second area. Let's watch good coverage. Felt like downfield. Graham steps up. Yep, it was Daughtry yep. who went up. He's almost 6'4". Got a hand on there to break that one. Break that one up. And it really, he, there was no receiver in the area that was but if you're, you targeted. Gotta, if you're not going to take off and run, you got to fire down there to try to make something happen yep. right on fourth and nine. That's a big rangy defensive back, isn't mm, he? For sure. And now the Rams will take it over and spinning on this one was Simmons, but Wits at the sophomore comes up and make a good open field tackle. And if the if the Rams take their time, they'll they'll just have to snap it once more here in the third. You get the feeling this is where Jack French wants to start that uh, death march, right? For sure. Just just run it. And and I think especially to, when you have so many players going both ways, yep. you'd love just to do what they did in that second quarter with yep. that eight-minute drive. Keep your defense off the field for sure. King will take this one, and King breaks one across the 40 up to the 41. He'll get 14 to close out the third quarter. The clock will stop until they move the chains, and then... It'll wind up and we will move to the fourth quarter and a fired up Jack French on the sidelines. Here is the Rams on top 14, 13 as we head to the fourth. They got the ball in the lead here in Westmobile. Tonight's game brought to you by Greer's, proud longtime sponsor of our starting lineup. So, so the U.S. Army kickoff presented by the U.S. Army. Be all you can be. And also the United States Coast Guard, proud to be sponsor of the uh, presentation of the colors at each Friday Night Rivals game. Uh, I think we I think request any of our armed forces to do flyovers before any of the game, like we had tonight here at the Coast Guard. That was spectacular, S wasn't it? Starting the fourth at the 40, Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Faith, and Viger, and the Rams looking to add to their lead here to open things up. Tyrell Dotson. Picks up 24. Yeah, they're, they're blocking now, Jim. They really, really combination blocks. They're moving people off the line, and they're creating big holes for these backs now. That's two plays in a row. Give them 25. They'll mark it actually down at the 35-yard line. Vigor's defense is a little tired. Uh, bring Dubose back over there on that side of the ball, and he comes charging through. And makes the stop. Micah Dubose has just said, I've, I've had enough of this momentarily as Simmons came through there, but Dubose looked like he was going to make something happen. Again, the starting left tackle, they move him over on the defensive side as well when they need a stop in the run game. He makes an impact. Two. Six foot five. The Rams pick up a couple there as. We're a minute into the fourth. I'm impressed with what Solomon's come in and done tonight here at quarterback for this Rams team. Managed, he's managed the game really well. Yep. And Rams have to take a timeout here. And while we're in the we're in our commercial break, there the players were lined up, ready to play, and Jack French was. Giving it to one of the officials, wondering why we couldn't play. And he yep. pointed to our red hat out on the field, like, hey, don't yell at me, yell at <laughs> him. And I, I don't think you want to want me to tell Jack that you were the one who were waiting for you to do your your reads there, that yeah. this was not We had to thank Breers. Yeah, exactly. And Jack was ready to get this one get this one going. So they take a timeout that I would guess they would have rather not have had to burn there just a minute 
into the fourth. No doubt. It's 14-13. You have no idea what lies ahead and how many, you may need that timeout. Yeah. Biger had just three first downs in the first half. Really. Five now. Yeah, just two here in the second half. Yeah. This. They've run it better, for sure. You know, they, this, this faith defense gave up 305 yards on the ground last week to St. Paul's. Hard to believe. St. Paul's getting shut out tonight. Yeah. All right, so second and eight for the Rams. King around the left side, and he gets brought down by Whitsitt. They're third down coming up for the Rams. This is kind of where we saw him try that long field goal. Yeah, the they, and quarter. it was all rushed. Yeah, it was didn't really give Hearn much of a, a chance to get set up and settled. But now third and seven, so you would, unless they wanted to try that again, but you would think two downs. Simmons comes in late, so they'll say with Simmons and Dotson and King in the backfield with Sullivan. Sullivan, pressure coming from the edge, dumps it across, and it's incomplete. Goes off the hands of King, and it'll bring up fourth down and stop the clock. Boy, Witsit was bringing the heat from the far edge there on Sullivan. They sure have asked King to do a lot tonight, right? Yeah. Both sides of the ball. And that one just a little. Wait, but you know, King still looks a little gimpy there trying yep. to move. I you agree. Know, it might be one thing just going north and south, but the lateral might be a little tougher. I agree. All right, so now they're, there's some confusion. I think I think this might be, I think they might be trying to show, maybe just trying to confuse them to get them to jump offside or something there. But now, while wow, Faith is going to have to use their second time out and Jack French, wow, they, so they, yeah, we'll, we'll take a break. It's like half of the field goal team unit ran out there and everybody else stayed there. Fourth down, coming up, two minutes into the fourth. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Roof Doctors. Got a sick roof, called the doctor, the proud su supporter of the uh, student athletes on Friday Night Rivals, also by Fast Signs. Now, decided to do a quick little kick on the punt here, and good job by Viger to fair catch that one. Also, Fast Signs, transforming your place begins at our place. Let Fast Signs help you make your statement. And Herc Reynolds, the eye in the sky, providing our eye in the sky in the end zone. Herc Reynolds, a proud longtime supporter of Friday Night Rivals. So, Quick kick there by, if that was Ratcliffe who, uh, Ratcliffe who made the punt and Biger now deepest they've been pinned back all night back at their own ten. If you're gonna find that ground game, this be a good spot, right? Yep. Johnson in the backfield with Graham, and Graham fires it. Holcomb has to turn around. Holcomb with a great speed makes a move at the. Five, but that's about it. Boy, that mm. seemed like a dangerous pass. Yeah, it was. Coming out there is Corey Stabler. Watch, was they almost got, almost got Holcomb back. Yeah, look at he's all the way back to the one. But the speedster able to slip a tackle, and now he's down in the field. Just. He's trying to, trying to, oh, it's just a cramp. Okay, so that's, that's good. Just stretching, stretching out there. More scores to pass along. A good one. Ball and kind of T.R. Miller leads Bayside 19-17. St. Michael leading Orange Beach 14-3 at the half. How about B.C. Rain? Their battle here in a 5A Region 1 game at home. On top of Citronelle, 35-7. UMS all over Alberta, 55 to seven, Sarah Land 59-12 over Blunt. 24-13, Gulf Shores leads Williamson in the third quarter. 
And 35-6 now, Spanish Fort with the lead over St. Paul's Baker on top of the Hurricanes. 35-6, Mary G. cruising against Davidson. 48-7, that Mary G. Baker game next week. Mm. Ooh, is that going to be big in Westmobile? They're going to bring in some temporary bleachers out there in Sims to get everybody in and out for that one, right? <laughs> Satsuma leading Wilcox Central 19-6. Mobile Christian on top of Hillcrest 42 Nothing is Holcomb still trying to get over to the – he might be a speedster, but that cramp's not allowing him no. to uh, be speedy right now. Well, Biger's hoping he can get back in the game because they're going to need all hands on deck for sure in this final nine minutes and change. They find themselves with a second and 15. Yeah, dangerous. Backed up all the way back to your own five here. And they keep the backfield empty with – Graham Benjamin had the banged up shoulder. Graham keep it himself on the right side and he's cut down right at the five yard line. Ja'Cory Stabler able to make the tackle and now third and long coming up. Stabler knifes through here. Watch him go low. Great play by Stabler. Wow. Look at that. And this is why they were playing the field position game. Jackson Williams there too, trying to trying to get him pinned back. Now you think about your your buyer, think okay, we've had trouble with the punt. Now we'll get something here. We'll be punting this one out of our own end zone. Yeah, and the punt's not any guarantee, no. right? So third and thirteen. Montgomery to the bottom of the screen. Graham rolls it to the right side. Hit. Driven back ball comes loose. I think they're going to say the Rams have it at the bottom of this this pile. We're going to say an incomplete pass. Let's watch this again. Way, way down the far end from where we are. Trying to. Oh, oh, that's not a pass. That's 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 not a pass. That is, oh, that, well, that, yeah, that, that was. Credit that, his strength for being able to stay up and, and throw whatever he did. Yeah. Oh, so watch again here. Back that's driving him back, trying to get it. Well, maybe, and yeah, maybe, maybe he got it. Boy, I don't know. Whew. Regardless, that's it. Kind of lateral it forward. Graham will stand in his end zone. He's had one blocked tonight. More pressure coming, but a good job to get the kick off, but it's going to be woefully short. And now that decision to punt and pin Meyer back at the 10 is looking very wise. Yeah, French ball. From the Rams as they're going to spot this one at the 20. I think it's going to be a 13-yard punt. Wow. Indeed, just a 13-yard punt. And so the Rams in the Dr. Pepper maroon zone. And now with Viger has not scored since the first play of the second quarter. Sullivan gives this one off to Dotson. Dotson up for a couple on the right side. Coleman makes the stop for the Wolves. Rams have run it for about 155 yards so far tonight on 48 carries. Wow. Grinding it out. Picked up three there. King looking to get to the left edge. King turns the corner, still on his feet, and King's in for the Rams. Touchdown. There you go. I apologize, 40 carries now for the Rams. And that one ends up pay dirt. And King has done a bunch of good things tonight. Second one on the ground for the Rams tonight. Byard only allowed three rushing touchdowns in the first five weeks. And AMS Calvert touchdown. Innovations in steel strengthened by people now hiring at AMS CalvertJobs.com. King. Try to get that, try to get him up high, and he's a big, strong back and plows through on the left side. 
And now Hearn on to try to make this an eight point lead. And he does. And it is 21, 13, five and a half. Into the fourth quarter here at Faith. More alumni here in the stands they've ever had for a football game. And they've had a lot to cheer about here tonight. None bigger than this touchdown here yeah, in the fourth. Bouncing it on the outside. They lose containment. And King's got the ability to get it into the end zone right there. They needed to drive on the ground. The problem, if you want to call it, was they only had 20 yards to go. Yeah, didn't take a lot of time off the clock. Right. You'll take the points anytime. You would. And our United States Coast Guard School Colors Cam. The Faith Academy students down here below us. And EJ King. Getting the crowd fired up to continue the kind of into the hair band era of the music here with some Guns N' Roses coming at you. Well coordinated musical effort by the uh, by the crew sure. out here. Good game plan coming in. They thought they could have needed to get the crowd going and have done that. And now Hearn on to. Give us our U.S. Army kickoff for the Rams. To the near side, Holcomb. Holcomb, he's got a lot of speed, gets hit up high, and then he's brought down, and they're going to throw that one. going to be a face mask at the end of that as he got pulled down at the 44. So they're going to start out across midfield. Yep. So we've not seen Benjamin come back out here, Dan. You know, he, he was banged up with that shoulder when he, he went down. Yep. And then they would put him at, they just moved him out at wide receiver. Yeah, there's the face mask. Yeah, and you could see even when he came out, split out to wide, he his shoulder was still bothering him, right under his shoulder maybe. Yep. And he's a big part of this team. Yeah. Because he can really change the game one play. Immediately. He's done it tonight. So Johnson will stay in there, the freshman. And he's now they do know he's not out on the field. Holcomb split out to the top. Graham again wants to call his own number on the right side. Searcy there going to drop him for a loss of four back to the 45. Searcy's made some really big plays tonight. I don't think any bigger than that. Our second leading tackler coming in tonight and Oh, is there a flag? Is there a flag? Well, they say maybe a horse collar. Let's or? see. Uh, I don't think they. Well, did they call? No. Oh no, that's a no, no, no. Okay, there's a flag on the play. I don't think it was a horse collar. Not what I saw. Yeah, no, that definitely wasn't. He got some cloth on the shirt. This could maybe going against Viger. Maybe a block in the back. Maybe a maybe a sideline warning. Just, maybe just we're being thrown over there. It's if he says that's the second sideline warning, then you got a problem. I don't. We had one I thought against dead ball, one sportsman like sportsman like against Biger. That might have been, maybe something. Maybe something, something was said, said yeah, maybe? Yeah. Uh, this dead ball is after. After uh, the play is over, yeah. I didn't even see the flag come out. Uh, I think we, neither of us saw the flag come out because it came out so late. Why? So this puts them all the way back to the 41, and they're going to go back wow. to the 36. I mean, they... Figer started at the 41 yard line. Yeah. Going in. Okay, and, and so 11 and 22. Oh, that's the, let's see at the end, they just kept going. I think uh, they called it on 22 because you saw the, the side judge give the 22. Yep, that's what that was all about. He was just blocking, to be honest with you. Play was over. 
He didn't know it. Kind of was a bad look. Yeah, so this is second and about 35 coming up here. Graham fires it incomplete as Holcomb and Graham were not on the same page no, there. He thought he was going to break it off, and uh, Holcomb kept running. Here's the thing, Jim. It's likely they're going to have to try and punt this thing out. Less than seven minutes to go. How quickly could they get it back? Yeah. The Faith Academy's running it that well. Yeah, they're, you're at third and 35 here. And, uh, boy, how do I, I wonder if you think if, it's, if, if you could get a chunk here. But you, you got to get 20 plus before you can even start to think, would we try uh, to you, go you, for you, it? You, you know? got, you've got to block for the quarterback, too, because they're coming. Graham rolls out, just wants to load it up, but he hit as he lets it go, and it's going to be incomplete up near midfield as he was trying to get it to Johnson, who kind of comes up a little gimpy out of his break there as yeah. well. And, and, you know, it's but not that, time to punt. It's time to try and punt. Yeah, and you took, you know, no – there's no time that ran off the clock there right. in that series because of the penalties and the incompletes. Yep. Started out at the 41-yard line of Faith Academy on yep. that side of the 50. Because there's a face mask on the return yep. that brought him all the way up. And now Dotson will stand back at about the 30. And Graham, who had just a 13-yard punt the last time, and he's had one blocked and returned for a touchdown tonight. And this one, very low kick. And Dotson just lets it... Roll to the 32-yard line. Good thinking by Dotson right there. Yep. Boy, this game has just 21 unanswered by the Rams. We seem to show up and that kind of thing happens. <laughs> and, and, and really, when, when Viger just looked very choppy to start the game, but then they scored, like we said, they scored first play of the second quarter on the long run, and you kind of, you know, I look at each other like, oh, boy, you kind of get the feel maybe this is just going to start like, get away from Faith Academy, and it's been nothing but. No, and especially, yeah, they got that 13 uh, nothing lead. But they really weren't quite out the gate. They were still Ooh. staggering on offense a little bit, just had a couple of big plays. Sullivan gives it off to Dotson and Dubose. And now Dubose holds his left ankle. He reached right forward on that tackle. You can still see the tackle he put on Joe Lott in that game a couple of weeks ago. Brutal. Let's see Joe Lott committed to Troy after after that game. Yeah, you kind of try to help him off the ground. Be careful with that offer. Yeah, we might need a Herc Reynolds piece of equipment here to help him out. Watch his left. It's a big, strong man. And the Viger's been hampered tonight. We've seen. Yeah, Faith, Faith Academy saying, uh, welcome to our world. Yeah, I saw Benjamin go out with the injured Brisker. They brought him a quarterback to try and get a spark, and he got, he got hurt. hurt. Yep. And so gain of three, and they get Dubose to the sideline. and That's going to hurt them defensively and offensively. Yeah, and against the run, where you got to yep. stop the run. Yep. And protect the quarterback if you get the ball back. Second and seven. Sullivan wanted to keep that one, but Witsit, the sophomore, has had a really solid game here tonight for the Wolves. Crashed down and made the stop on that one. And third and long now coming up for the Faith Academy Rams. Three and three on the year, two and two in the region. We said they... You, know, you can start looking. It's like oh, you gotta, you just gotta, gotta try to get another region win here for your Faith Academy because you know what, everybody's gonna be bunched up in that three and four spot. King gets to the outside, and King's gonna pick up a first down on third and twelve. What a play by King! Again to the outside. Gets it up to the forty-two yard line. That's good blocking. Yeah, penetration, but King's able to elude that. And then he's got enough. Yeah, knew where those sticks were, too. Yeah. 
play was designed with good power blocking, and I mean, they executed. I mean, like you said, you're, you're starting to wonder, does Viker get the ball back in this game? Yeah, really. Inside five minutes, they have two timeouts. Simmons breaks the tackle to the right side, and he's got another first down into Viger territory. Picks up about 14. He looks over to the bench, gives a big smile. Like, yeah, we got him again. Breaks a, a one-handed tackle here as Lang just couldn't shed the block to get him. Yep, Lang was there, but he was engaged. Yeah, I mean, they're going to... It's going to be under four minutes when they take this snap. So they're... Viger's got two timeouts left. They're up eight. Uh, let's see how they manage all this. Yeah, play clock down to two. And one, Sullivan barely gets it off. And King is hit in the backfield. And Jeremiah Coleman, you just have to wonder if I'm going to start thinking about timeouts here soon as Coleman stopped that one immediately and I'm not sure why we have the stoppage a lot See of people I, hurt oh, tonight oh, maybe if no oh false start you know that was just because the play clock was down to down to one yeah the so flag was dropped to the right at the near silence we could not see it but it, so backs him up five yards, but then play clock resets it. Sullivan just waits. Oh, Sullivan wanted to give it off, but nobody was home in the backfield. And then Witsit was the only one there. And oh, there was just communication problems between Sullivan and his two backs. Sullivan did not expect to be the one ending up with a hold, holding out of the football at that that play. No, that was an awkward spot he was in, and not much he could do with it. Clock still. Is it running or it's not? I don't know why it stopped now. So oh, another false start penalty. Okay. So, yeah, if, if that official to the near side drive, if where we are with all the – Faith Academy players in front of us. If he drops it on the near sideline, we we can't see the flag. Right. Plus the not mic'd up. Hold on. So but now oh yeah, so Viger's gonna decline that penalty. They'll take the loss and the loss of down. Okay. So it's gonna bring up second and about sixteen because of the loss there for Slade Sullivan. But your play clock's at 20, down to about three minutes left. They snap it high, snap. Sullivan, a good job to get it off to Simmons. But Viger defense shut that one down. And now third and third and long. So I thought maybe Viger would think about maybe a timeout there. You know, I think that Faith Academy wants to think about really Bleeding this plate clock every time, too. Yeah, so I mean, they're, 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 they snapped it with 15 last play or thereabouts. Yeah, third and third and 15 here. You, they're gonna, you're gonna keep. You think you're gonna keep it on the ground. You don't want to throw an incomplete. Right. Keep, so you keep it on the ground. Keep the clock running. Force Viger to take that timeout at third and 20. They give it off to King on the left side, and kinda, King will yeah, just creeping his way for a few yards. Get a handful, but it's gonna bring up fourth and. A punt situation, and Viger not going to use a timeout here. So with 35 on the play clock, I mean, it's going to be down to, I mean, down to about 145 before this one gets punted away. I might have used one of my two timeouts there. Seems he would consider that for sure. Yeah. They're going to be in really tough field position again. Really backed up again. Viger bringing everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Hearn gets it off, chases Holcomb back and just rolls to the far sideline. 
Almost touched there by. But now you're down to a minute 38, and you have not had. So we said this is not a, a Viger team that, that really throws the ball downfield for big. big no, they've run it. For big plays, for, yeah. For big plays, and I don't know that uh, the runner so has they had, they been had, back in the game. They had 70 rushing yards at, the, at halftime. Viger right now in the night, they have rushed it. 18 times for 112. Ah, so they've got 52 yards in the second half. 51 of those 118 came on the first play of the second quarter. Yep. That's a fact. And Biger pinned back deep in their own end. Graham fires that one off and incomplete on first down. Stops the Stops the clock with second and ten, and so the so Benjamin was injured. Looked like a shoulder early in the fourth quarter, and he's not been back out there. And he's your home run hitter. Yep, he's just try to get it to him. Montgomery split to the bottom of the screen. Graham looking his way, heaves that one up, and broken up. Breaking on the ball to knock that one away was Dotson. That one was kind of hung in the air a little bit. Yeah, Montgomery was kind of waiting on it. And now third huh. and long. Nice play by Dotson there to break that one up. Jared Kihas giving us a great view down there on the sideline. Third and ten. Jerry and Graham, South Alabama commit, needs to make a play for his Viger Wolves here on third and 10. Looks right, fires it incomplete. Off the hands of his intended receiver, Holcomb, and here's your ball game. Fourth and 10 from the 20. What a win this would be for Jack French and the Faith Academy Rams. Rolled by St. Paul's a week ago. They bounce back quick. Viger coming off an impressive victory. They were off last week. Unbeaten on the year, ranked number seven in the state. Here we go. Graham steps up, fires incomplete. No one around. And Jack French. And the Rams, Viger has two timeouts left. But you're about to get the ball on the 20, and Marcus Cook is just wondering what happened here tonight at Ram Stadium. Yeah, he was confident going into the game. Last time he saw his team, it was a great performance against UMS Wright. We were there. Faith coming off a game that just really gave up a ton of yardage. We're down early, 23 nothing at the half to St. Paul's. Homecoming, of, it's been an emotional night here at, at Faith Academy for sure. It really has. More uh, alumni back on campus for a game than any they can ever remember. Place has just been bananas with the with the music selection and the hard play. Give it off to King. King will bang it into the pile, and Viger will have to take one of the remaining two timeouts. We're down to 104 left, and Viger. With one timeout, here Viger just trying to strip that ball out. And they're down to one timeout remaining. So this will this will tighten things in this region mm -hmm. a little more. Yeah, you know, when you think you've got it figured out, guess what? You don't. It's especially in this 6A region. I mean, yeah. St. Paul's slammed this team a week ago and are getting it back at them from Spanish Fort tonight. Uh, Got to thank the folks here at Faith Academy for the nice hospitality. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, hospitality and the stadium experience is yeah. actually on par with some colleges. Look what I did at halftime when you were down on the field. There was a, 
I told you, if I started in that, <laughs> that bowl of chocolate, those Reese's peanut butter cups, gone. there was like 14 in a bowl, and they were gone. They, it lasted lo- less than Jack French's interview. <laughs> King on the right side falls ahead for a couple more. It'll force Viger to take their final timeout. Now will bring up third down. So you keep it on the ground here. Viger's out of timeouts. It's That's just, a ball game. Yeah. Just take a knee. Yeah. So, think about it. so you, you, yeah. So you can't, you can't totally run it out. No. Um, let's see. You're it's third down, so you're snapping. You know, the, you know, you can get first down, and then there you go, right? Yep. Crazy night too with the weather. We really didn't expect as much rain as we got, and then you look on the radar, and it was one little blip just hanging over you. Yep. Strange night. And I know it's got to feel like a strange night to the Biger coaching staff tonight. How homecoming. What a homecoming win this would be for Faith Academy. Well, Bon Jovi. Got them all here tonight. They play the hits at Faith. Nothing. Really, it really is a good stadium experience. If you had your hit. Post-1989, it's not getting played at faith. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Dan said, they could get a first down to about the 10. It's third down. Sullivan with the give and hit behind the line by Purifoy. Of course. So, it's, but it's going to be about 10 seconds left here. So, do you, do you just run it? Do you snap it and just run around to try to burn it off? Because you're... You're about 11 seconds between the play clock and the game clock. Or if your Faith Academy has one timeout left, you just run it all the way down to zero. And then do you, 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 you don't want to, I don't think you want to try the, a, a field or no. anything like that. Could a chance for something to go, go wrong. Do you, do you take a direct snap to one of your running backs yeah. and just let them almost run backwards, run around or, or do you, well, we're about to find out. So they let the play clock run down. So the clock will stay stopped here when they snap it on fourth down. So, you know, I, I would guess that Jack French has been in this exact situation. 1,100 times. <laughs> in his <laughs> illustrious career. Yeah. St. Paul's wins 35-6 tonight. Sarah Lance still big over Blunt. But here, this is going to be a surprise in this region tonight for sure. BC Rain, what a win for them in this region. It, BC Rain look at this and saying, oh, Viger lost, huh? Big win for them over a Citronelle team that's on the hop so far this year as well. So 21 13. Wow, so you just try to. Just don't let go of that football is the one, the one thing they're. Yep. So Slade, who is, boy, he's managed this game so impressively. Here I since agree. he came in. Yeah. He's not turned the ball over. And I'm not saying it was an afterthought that he came out for football, but yeah. he's a baseball player. So here we go. Give it off, and King just trying to stand upright, and they finally wrap him down and pull him down. 6.9 seconds left, so Viger. All they need is a touchdown and a two-point conversion here in the last seven seconds of this one. Well, base defense will have to come out one more. One more time. And Viger needs a miracle to stay perfect on the season. Graham brings his wolves out here. What 
What you got dialed up to go 85 on the last play of the game, Viger Wolves. They're going to put Chris Perry at quarterback. Big arm to the near side, hangs that one up, and it's broken up. But time will expire. And the Faith Academy Rams stun the previously unbeaten Miger Wolves here tonight on homecoming. Is Dotson a little slow after breaking that one up, but I think maybe he might have had the wind knocked out of him. He may have ended up coming down on that football, but the Faith Academy Rams with a very impressive victory here tonight, 21-13 over the Viger Wolves. What a win here tonight on homecoming for the Rams. We'll come back and take you back down to the field after this. Win here tonight for Faith Academy. Boy, they dominate the time of possession. They hold the football for just one tick. Now we're going to officially say 33 minutes and three seconds. So time of possession more than two to one in favor of Viger. And our player of the game, EJ King, he'd been out, banged up the past couple of weeks, got a little banged up in this one, but came in and really a workmanlike effort here tonight. King 18 rushes for 92 yards and got the touchdown here that put this one eventually out of reach with the eight point lead for the Faith Academy Rams and EJ King is, he said he's sort of leading rusher coming in but was a little banged up the past couple of weeks not on the field and wasn't 100% tonight and saw him go down and have to get helped off came back out and just kind of grinds it away as Faith just ran the ball 51 times here tonight for just 188 yards. Not a, you know, not a great number per carry, but it kept the clock running and kept that Viger offense off the field for all but just 14 minutes and change. And let's go down to Dan Brennan with the victorious head coach, Jack French. in terms of total wins, but your team came to play tonight. They sure they did. Uh, you know, we, we knew they could play like that. And thank goodness they picked it this night to do it. Uh, both sides of the ball, too. I thought the defense was, was terrific all night. Just kind of flying around. Yeah, we, we have a good defense. And, you know, we've been kind of, some kind of pestilence going through us. So, and, you know, we've got enough folks back well. And, Enough folks started doing what they're supposed to do, and, and uh, that, that's what happened. Uh, they look good tonight. A friend from Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper is here to award you guys something. I think you're going to like this. Coach, <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, they love, they love the Dr. Pepper belt. Oh, love, love it. You see Ty Goodwill took it from Coach French and hoisted it up there. What a win for Faith Academy tonight. Up to three and two in the region, four and three on the year. They surprised the previously unbeaten Biger Wolves, and they do it here on homecoming night. Get the victory by a score of 21-13. Thirteen. I want to thank all of our great partners here on Friday Night Rivals, including Dr. Pepper and that great belt. The Coast Guard, thanks for the flyby to start this game as well. Mobile County Sheriff's Office, Greer's, Andy Citroen Injury Attorneys, Roof Doctors, IBEW, or as most people pronounce it, IBEW, Local 505, AMS Calvert, Fast Signs, United States Army, and also our friends at Herc Reynolds. So for Dan Brennan, my partner, our great Friday Night Rivals crew here tonight, Vince Early, our great director here on this big win here at Faith Academy for the Rams. I'm Jim Cox saying good night. We're 5A Region 1. Just got a little more jammed up.
as the Faith Academy Rams get the victory here tonight, 21-13 on homecoming.